Sorry, I, I just don't like to talk over people. All right, so, uh, so this, okay. This is, a, uh, this is a panel that we just happened. Uh, we're, uh, we would appreciate it. I don't, is anybody running against you? Yeah, somebody is, but I don't, I don't Okay, so they're simply not um, we were, this is not a debate, it's a panel interview, so uh, we certainly appreciate it. I'm not saying you would, but um, if there are no derogatory comments to other candidates or anything like this, because it's an interview, it's more like a, a, an interview than a, than a debate. Um, and so the format of this uh, panel interview is you will be given a minute and a half to introduce yourself and say whatever you'd like. Uh, the panel will go through their questions, they have about 30 seconds to ask questions, and then you have up to a minute, and you don't have to use the entire minute if you don't want to. Uh, to answer the question as you see fit. And there are no follow-up questions uh, during the um, And so we very much appreciate you being here. And if you'd like to please uh, start with your minute and a half introduction. Okay, hi everybody. Uh, first of all, let me begin by thanking you for the opportunity. Uh, my name is Jerry Tao. I am the District Court Judge in Department 20. I was appointed to the bench in January of 2011 by the governor. Um, and uh, since then, I've worked very hard to be the best judge that I can be. In the most recent uh, Las Vegas View Journal poll, 86% of the attorneys who appeared in front of me uh, favored my retention, which actually, if you do the numbers, they didn't do the chart this year, but it actually makes me the fourth highest rated district judge in the Civil Criminal Division of the 32 judges in that division. And I'm very honored and pleased that uh, my hard work has been uh, uh, recognized by the attorneys who appear in front of me. Prior to taking the bench, I served as a Clark County Deputy District Attorney, as a uh, attorney in private practice, um, as a Chief Deputy Public Defender, and, and uh, so I've been a prosecutor, a defense attorney, and a civil attorney as well. And uh, all of, uh, and all of that experience, I think, is uh, certainly well on the bench because uh, in the end, uh, I have, I was good docket, and in the end, the judge is uh, some of the best master of many different fields of law. Um, I appreciate the opportunity to be here, and uh, you know, I don't know that I have a full minute and a half uh, to, to introduce myself, but uh, I guess I'll look at the questions if you guys have any. You don't have to take the entire Okay, sure. Thank you. I just, you know, I'm, I'm the kind of guy I'm not super comfortable to in my own corner. So uh, that, that's it's, okay. It's a little, you know, little awkward to me. I know, you know, as long as I'm running for office, I need to learn how to do that. But, okay. Uh, that's fine. Why don't we start with uh, Miss Knight? I'll just go down the panel. Okay, she is passing. Okay. Want to go down the line? Questions? <laughs> um, See, nobody took your question this time. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, my first question is what do you think you owe that at 86% retention rate? You know, um, I mean, obviously, I have the, uh, to ask the attorneys, but uh, I, uh, uh, I've tried very hard to do a good job. I try to be fair. The, the most important qualities in a judge are, are that they be fair and impartial and uh, open-minded and uh, consider all the arguments that are presented very seriously. I've tried very hard to do that. Uh, in addition, judges should be prepared and thorough, and uh, I've tried hard to do that as well. Uh, I. Uh, uh, you know, I uh, spend a lot of time in the office on weekends and evenings, which I know is a little bit unusual because I feel like I have the obligation to do that. If the attorney said brought a motion to me that is important, uh, then I think uh, uh, if, they, if it's important enough for, my for them to bring to my attention, it's important enough that I should give it my full attention and uh, the best ruling that I uh, can give to it. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, and I think that, uh, uh, that those are the qualities that I think make a good judge. I've tried to do that. And, uh, you know, I. And uh, I think that, uh, um, you know, that's really what's, uh, what's important in judge. Thank you. Hi, Judge. Hi. So um, a lot of my questions have been based on education because it's, it's a very important subject matter for me. And just based on the cases that you've seen in your court, um, what would be the biggest advice that you can give to um, the defendants? And what are the last couple of books that you read that stood out to you? I didn't the last part of the book. The last couple of books that you've read that stand out to you. The last couple of books that I've read? Well, it's interesting you mentioned education. As, you, uh, as I'm sure you know, judges uh, per se don't have a lot to do with education. That's a policy matter. Um, I do know that we are in the budget environment that we're in and everyone's talking about cutting things. Hopefully the economy's turning around and has become less of a concern, but I know that it's, it's always an issue. 
Um, and I think that the, uh, the value of education to uh, a person's life is measured by what I see in court every day. Um, when in the criminal docket, before I sentence somebody for uh, a crime, I get what's called a pre-sentence investigation report. You guys, you guys have probably heard other judges mention that. It's a, a, a background and report on this person. It's usually six to ten pages long. Talks about their education, family history, and mental health history, their employment history, uh, any prior criminal record, things like that. And it's really, really rare that I ever sentence someone um, on any kind of felony who's actually completed high school. It's really, really rare, to the point where when I uh, am going through these reports or sometimes when I'm going through a case and I have to question something about their educational background, if they say they graduated or even got a GED, it kind of raises my eyebrows because most people who enter in court uh, don't have Sorry, don't have degrees, and I think that there's a there's very much of a correlation and even causation. I'm sorry. Yeah, you're supposed to respect the time. So, so I literally have to stop in the middle of a sentence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just want to make sure. I let you finish your sentence. You just started another sentence. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. I apologize. Oh, uh, you guys are strict here. Okay. I'm sorry. I, you know, like when I come before you, judge, if uh, I okay. just try to obey the rules. Well, but see, see, that's I think that's how I got to cut the eighty-six because I don't usually cut people. Off like that, so. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's you know. <laughs> oh, the truth comes out. No, no, no. no. You, got, you, you know, because okay. you start court on time okay, and okay. you read. Stop. Oh, okay, sorry. You just pick up all the section time. <laughs> Please, pass it here. You guys, I kid because I love you. You guys know that, hopefully. That's it. <laughs> but I, I just stop. Just... <laughs> okay. All right. Next week. Okay. Yes, you know there's a book out that says all the lessons we learn are learned in kindergarten. And I know that you've had a lot of education. So I'll ask you, from sitting from law school and all the education that you have acquired over the years, what have been your greatest lessons that you've learned from sitting on the bench? Wow, that's, that's an interesting one. The greatest lessons, uh, I think that uh, it's... Uh, it's important to treat others with respect. Um, I, prior to taking the bench, I obviously was a lawyer and I heard from all the uh, other judges. And even if a judge gives you a great ruling, if he does so in a manner that you feel is disrespectful, um, that makes you question whether that ruling is right. But if you treat the lawyers and especially litigants with respect um, and with courtesy, um, then I think that goes a long way. Um, and uh, uh, that's, you know, that may be why, going back to the other question, uh, maybe why, um, you know, my rating is as high as it is because I try very hard to do that. Um, even, you know, even in, in, people who appear in court, they appear in their, on their worst days. They've ever been charged with a crime or they're in a lawsuit or they've been sued or they're going through some kind of child custody battle. And sometimes when they appear, they're not in their best frame of mind. And it's very easy to let that get to you and be upset and say, hey, you, you know, you're being a jerk. But you have to remember, they're not there because they necessarily want to be there. And I think if you treat them with courtesy, and even sometimes courtesy that they don't necessarily deserve, I think it goes a long way towards making them feel that they got justice. <laughs> you got an extra sentence in there. So. <laughs> I have to come before you later, so I'm going to stand off this year. Remember his face, Judge. Remember his face. Right. So, so Judge, uh, apparently you've got to, you know, you've been sitting on the bench for the past few years here with us, and you're doing an impeccable job. Um, what are some of the things you do off the bench within the community itself? that is helping our community be able to get through all this, you know, financial problems that we're having, the housing crisis that we're going to face yet again by the end of this year. Um, what are you doing within our communities to, to try and help some people? I, I think the big thing is, I think uh, what judges do has a real mystery to it. People watch what we do on TV and crime shows and all that kind of thing, but it's never accurate. And especially in the civil world, you don't see a lot of uh, TV shows about lawyers engaged in civil practice. So what I do is I spend a lot of time uh, going to schools and uh, high schools, elementary schools, and uh, and uh, even UNLV, and try to educate students on what's going on. What judges do we do? I have uh, classes of students come in and watch me in court all the time. I do a lot of mock trial and moot court type of program for students where they get to learn about the court system. Uh, I think it helps to take some of the mystery out of it. I know that in court sometimes you have lawyers talking in all these strange kind of Greek and Latin terms, and, and people don't understand it. But if you take the time to educate kids and what's going on and why we do what we do. Uh, it removes some of that veil, and I think it helps people understand uh, the kinds of things that might get you into trouble, and uh, by implication, the kinds of things that you can do to avoid getting in trouble. Uh, I know homeowner home foreclosure is a big issue. Uh, you know, I, I can't even tell you how many cases I have my docket that involve uh, foreclosed homes. Um, and it, I know the Supreme Court has something like a couple hundred appeals. Time, on the service. 
for those issues. But uh, <laughs> I'll just not there because I don't want to get yelled at again. Thank you. I'm not yelling. I'm not talking over you. When did you first dream about becoming a judge, and what do you enjoy the most about being a judge? Um, you know, I think every, or most lawyers, I think, harbor a secret fantasy about being a judge someday. Uh, so I think, like, like most lawyers, it's an idea that I kind of toyed with for, for a few years. But actually what happened was this interesting story. Um, the judge who I replaced in 2011 was Dave Wall, who's actually an old, old friend of mine. He was my first team chief in the DA's office. And uh, I didn't even seriously think about uh, going for his seat when he announced his retirement. Honestly, what happened was I heard he was retiring, and I went into his chambers and with him and kind of gave him a hard time. Hey, we can do it, and you know, that kind of thing. And he actually threw out there, hey, you should put in for it. I think you'd be good at it. And sort of once he mentioned that, I thought about it and said, you know, why not? I'll give it a shot. And obviously, things worked out um, a pretty good way, and the governor uh, appointed me, and I'm very, very grateful for that. Um, and the, uh, the second, what do I enjoy most? It's going to be the most cliched answer in the world, but it really is an opportunity to, to, uh, uh, to play a role in the shaping of our community. Um, I know that sounds, it, it, I'm sure that's the response everybody uh, gives, but it's true. Uh, as a lawyer, you advocate on behalf of your client, um, and you're fighting for a particular Thanks. cause, but, you, but as the judge, you actually decide what the cause I had a but, it was the same sentence continuing, so it wasn't a new sentence. I'm, I'm not, yes. <laughs> Maybe I need to talk faster. Is that the solution? Excuse me. Yeah. <laughs> Please. We've got three more questions we're trying to get in. So. Okay, hi, Jessica. Hi. Um, it looks like you, you um, your attention, I guess, increased because I remember 2013, you had like 80%, maybe like 100 percent of respondents voted in favor of keeping you on the bench. So in that case, then, have you ever had a situation where you felt like you were um, ineffective as a judge and effective, and then what have you learned from that? Um, the, I mean, the answer obviously is yes. Is that one of the big problems with our court system here is that uh, we uh, we don't have an immediate appellate court. The Madison court's overworked, and we have uh, we're one of the busiest court systems in the country. Uh, I don't know the statistics as, as of today, but a couple of years ago, every district court judge had an average of 2,100 cases. That was nearly twice the national average of district court judges. So workload is an issue, and as a result of that. The simple answer is, yeah, I've had good days and bad days because there are just days when there's just so many things going on that you can't be focused. There's, you know, if I'm sitting in trial until 5.30, then I have to get ready for the next morning's calendars. If there's if there's 20 motions on the next day, then between 5.30 and whenever I get too tired to work, that's when I'm getting ready for it. And so, can I sit here and say I got everything right? No, I, I can't. I don't think any judge, in all fairness, can ever say that when you have that kind of workload. Um, but you do the best that you can at the time that you have, and uh, make the best decisions you can, and uh, if you're going to make mistakes, um, the best you can do is, is uh, you sort of take your best shot sometimes. I wish it weren't that, that situation, but you know, it is what it is, our, our case load is what it is, and it's not going to change in time soon, sir. And we are done. Thank you so much for coming. We very Thank much you very much for the afternoon. I apologize. For